Always position your backlight a feet away from the subject you're shooting. It can be a model, can be a product, just so that the light doesn't wrap around your subject. If you're going for light wrapping around your subject, then don't worry about that one feet away. But if you don't want your light to, your backlight to, you know, pollute your key light, make sure it's a feet away to be safe, two feet away. Welcome back to another episode of Light and Color. In today's video, we'll be looking at achieving a pure white backdrop in the studio. There are many ways in achieving that. And in today's video, I'll be using the backlighting method or lighting or light source from the back to show you how to achieve that pure white. Most of the time, I see photographers do this kind of lighting, which is also known as high key lighting, where, of course, the light, you have two lights where one is coming from behind the subject and one in front of the subject. And the one behind, you most of the time see that the light you know wraps around the subject which isn't ideal for set shoots at the end of the day you find out that you have to increase your blacks such that you know it brings a lot of contrast to the image and maybe that might not be what you're looking for so i'll be teaching you guys how to you know avoid that light wrapping around your subject avoid halation avoid seeing less contrast in your images avoid having your backlight pollute your key light and with that i will say always position your backlight a feet away from the subject you're shooting it can be a model can be a product just so that the light doesn't wrap around your subject if you're going for light wrapping around your subject then don't worry about that one feet away but if you don't want your light to your backlight to you know pollute your key light make sure it's a feet away to be safe two feet away Secondly, you should have, you know, a working system, maybe a laptop beside you or you should be tethering in the studio. I, I, I think I will encourage tethering in the studio such that when you shoot and maybe you're using Capture One or Lightroom, you can read your RGB values. In Lightroom, your RGB values are mostly somewhere around to, I, I think, 98. If both red, green and blue are all um, lit properly, they should be at 98 in capture one it should be 258 if i'm correct but if i'm not maybe 255 what i'm trying to say is just to be sure that you're not overblowing or your backlight is not overblown you can shoot a stop lower so in capture one 254 253 that's if i'm right with the value yeah i think i'm right 254 253 in lightroom you should look at 97.5 96 96.5 just to be sure that you're not blowing back your backlight just to pollute your you know your key light that is one way of also figuring out if your backlight or your background light or your white background is pure white you know getting it right in camera is the key to making it look better in post-production you can have all this in post-production but you won't have the same effect you would have if you have gotten or if you would have gotten a right in camera so talking about cameras today i'll be using my canon 5d mark 4 with my trusted 100 millimeter lens f2.8 i'm tethering as usual with this tether cable from tether tools the x2t trigger i'll be using the 8600 which is modified by the 55 centimeter beauty dish for my key lights of course i am looking out for cutting edges on the model's face i'm trying to you know mimic both hard lights and soft lights at the same time the beauty dish is the best. You can go in for bigger ones, but I like the 55 centimeters. Also, with the backlighting, I'm using the SK400 modified with the 140 centimeter of the box. I have ordered for the 7 feet square source box from Impact. It's been like two months now, it's not in. So, this is, um, you know, a second option. So, usually get a bigger, um, a bigger light source or a bigger modifier to use as your backlight when you're you know shooting beauty or shooting the products and you want to use the backlighting method or quote unquote the high key method so yeah before before i get into this video make sure you subscribe to the channel which is quite important to me make sure you check out the episode one of you know lights and color which i'm going to leave up here i did a chase in the natural light i think some days ago so check that one out learn a thing or two about overcast and sunny um shooting conditions and yeah, so the model is getting ready, the makeup artist is doing her job and we'll just wait and see what we can do and how best 
you know, I'll be able to show you the difference between, you know, blowing your backlight and having a perfect backlight with the appropriate RGB values. Peace. But well, I'm currently ready to shoot. The model is ready. We have the beautiful Elsa. Dark skin. My kind of model. Very dark. All right, so I will show you. I'll show you how it works when I'm trying to, you know, um, get the right exposure for the backlight and also the right exposure for the key light and not have my backlight um, pollute my key light. All right. So I just wanted to introduce the model to you and see the sets you're using. I'm sure in one of the bureaus I showed what and how the sets looks like and how far off she is. Eh, we can say she's a feet away from, you know, my backlight, which is being powered by the SK400, if you don't remember. And the key light, the 55 centimeter beauty dish, is going to be powered by the AD600. So we'll take a couple of test shots. My AD standard is off. Right, we we'll take a couple of tech shots, then I'll show you how it works and what you need to do when it comes to, you know, shooting and getting the right exposure for your backdrop. Yep. So I'll show you how or what I'm seeing on the screen. Currently, the ISO is 100, f7.1, shutter speed 1 over 160. Temperature wise, right. So usually I like to put my temperature at 5,600 and since I'm using that Octabox, I'm not getting any pollution of light so far. The only problem is the key light here, which is, I mean, the video light over here, which is currently showing in this. But if you take a look at the background, okay, now I just changed my f-stop to 8. If you take a look at the background and I move my Keza around the white background, you can see my values at right at the middle or the center, which is obviously, which is obviously the hot spot. You realize the values are 252, 251, 250, and 251, which is a little bit okay. Let me add um, one third of a stop. So I'm at 1 over 16 plus 0.3. Let's see how that works. So right in the middle, of course, is going to be hot spot and blown out so i have that to 255 but when i move a little bit further above her head and maybe a little bit towards the left side and the right side you see the values you know fluctuating hence telling me i have the right exposure for the background or the backlight so now let me turn on the key light currently the key lights are one over eight Yep, and I think I would have to reposition that because it's hitting. Yeah, put someone there is fine. Let's see that again. Okay, let me send it. Stop down so plus 16.07 or plus 16 1 over 16 plus 0 0.7. Which one do you think looks best? Comparing these two, which one do you think is better? The right one or the left one? Let me turn it so that you see the wall. The right one. Yep. Okay, I think the right one is... Okay, so I've dialed in my settings. I have my key light at 1 over 16 plus 0 0.7 and my backlight at 1 over 16 plus 0 0.3. And I have the settings I want to actually start shooting. These cool stuff are not really reflective, but you yeah, can work with them. Okay, so... This is what I want you to avoid when you're shooting with backlight. So I'm going to currently put my backlight at 1 over 8. 
And when I do this and I show you the um, histogram reading, you now realize that there are no more blacks in there. And that's what I call, or that's what I term by your backlight, you know, um, polluting your key light. So comparing this histogram for this said image to this one, and when you try and pull back, say, the blacks into this, let's try that with the levels. It adds, it adds more contrast to the image than this. When we try and add just a little bit of blacks, then we are good to go. So know which one is appropriate for you, which of course, avoid the one with the halation or the one with the light polluting your image. So I'm going to go with this. Let's see if that was the same filter I used earlier. I don't think that's it. Let's try that again. Okay. So I think we are ready to shoot. Okay, so you see the poses. Just work around it. Look at the one that you can just execute. But I would like to get one of this. And maybe one of this. I mean, I mean everything. So which one should we start with? No, no, tell me which one should we start with? All right, sure. Hi guys, um, I just rounded up my shoot with Joey and I had a great time. I, sure? Yeah, I like um, I like to shoot like really fast and then it was fast, we got our pictures fast, the makeup was great. Yeah, so I had a good I time. Sure <laughs> well, isn't it great? Like, doesn't it look great? It is. Yeah, so... So you guys should subscribe to his channel. <laughs> yeah. You want him to follow you? On Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Follow me on Instagram at Elsa. Yeah, bye. bye. That's it. <laughs>